Hi everyone. Okay, I am really excited today. I am finally doing a flick and spin. It's been way too long. Okay, so um, let me just show you the canvas I'll be using. It is a 50 by 50 centimeter um, deep edge wrapped canvas like that. And I've already prepped the, uh, prepped the back. I just need to get my uh, spinner and the spinning pool sorted out. But I wanted to show you the colours before I do that. But before I do that, um, Angel asked me to uh, show how or describe how I um, mix uh, the brown colour that I like to use quite often. So I'll show you that first and then we'll get on with uh, checking out the colours I'll be using. Okay, so in my last video, um, somebody wanted to know how I make the brown that I uh, sometimes use, especially when I do my uh, very favorite uh, mix of, um, or color combo of um, brown and pink. Now, um, it's really quite simple. <laughs> All it is, is a red pigment and a black. So what I like to use is the Amsterdam uh, Oxide Black for the black, but there's also um, another ingredient. I like to add a little bit of uh, shimmer with um, a gold. Um, I like the Winsor & Newton Gold, but you could easily use, I don't know, um, Amsterdam Deep Gold, any gold really. But to make the brown, um, yeah, you need a, a red pigment. I like to use um, a single pigment one because then you, you know, you get a cleaner result really. Now, the Burnt Sienna is actually a red, is a pigment red uh, 101, so that would work. And um, I've also used Carmine, which I don't have right now, that works really well. Uh, Pirol Red, not used that one before for making this PR, so pigment red, 254. Um, that's more of the Pirol red. Uh, I've also used um, this one, uh, Natho Red Medium, and that's a pigment red, 112. And then we have this one here, which is a primary magenta. Now this is actually a, a pigment violet, so we won't be using that one. So I think I am going to go with the Pirol Red because I've not done that one before. Okay, so let's just get to it. And I can't unfortunately give you precise, uh, excuse me, <laughs> precise, um, um, you know, recipe for this because I eyeball it. I just how I see fit and you know once the color is pleasing to me that's when I start doing doing the rest of it so yeah can't give you a recipe I'm afraid okay more of the pearl red in there nice big um tube this one I like using the tubes because they're easy but the small ones just run out run out so so quickly okay there we go so that's our beginning and then i'm just gonna put in the black is you know is so so dark so you only want to put in a little bit and just see see where you are once you've mixed it in oh and always always if you want to be really sure of the shade you're getting make sure you do your mixing with the straight colors so start adding your additives um i don't know uh flow troll whatever after you've arrived at a color you like okay so that's nowhere near dark enough yet but let me just scrape the sides real well yeah Nowhere near dark enough. So a bit more black. Oh, that's quite a lot. But that's why I like to have <coughs> plenty of paints to go 
uh, on standby, if you like, just in case it goes in the wrong direction then. Okay, we're actually getting pretty close to a nice shade now. And yeah, I like to add the gold once I have a brown that I like. First with the, uh, with the regular paints. And yeah, this is nice because then I know I only have two pigments here. So there won't be any uh, horrendous surprises with um, colors um, once I mix this or use this with other colors, you know, no nasty surprises with uh, something unexpected. And this is what I like to uh, oftentimes mix my own colors or at least be sure of the pigments used in, in the colors you're using. Okay, that is really, really close now. Let's just have a look. Bit more mixing. Just scraping my sides and the bottom. Make sure I get all the all the color mixed in nicely. That is actually a really rather nice color now, but I am going to add just a little bit more black because the gold will again lighten it a little bit. And make sure you give it a really, really, really good mix. Yeah, you can see with the uh, Pirol Red, it actually cuts uh, towards orange. That's what my eyes say anyway. So you end up using it a little bit more black than you would do with, um, say, a carmine, which is uh, less, less towards, or not at all towards orange, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, and then let's have a little comparison to this one here. Yeah, I think we're almost there. Not quite, it's still quite red. So let's just pop in just a bit more. And like I said, I've not used the, the Pirol Red for making this before. So I am actually surprised how much black I'm using here. I think we're getting close to sort of uh, two parts red, one part uh, black, but yeah. Okay, now that is nice, isn't it? Lovely, lovely brown. And I like this brown because, you know, as you know, <laughs> it cuts towards uh, uh, red. So yeah, it's a really nice, uh, nice shade it's not so flat okay and then i'll put in some gold actually plenty of it there you go and just mix that in oh yeah and another thing to um be mindful of is the opacity so this one here the pearl red is uh, semi-transparent but because the oxide black is opaque, um, even though I'm adding the gold, I will have an opaque paint. I like that the gold really sort of brightens up the color. I'll show you in a sec once I've added a bit more, I think. Or a lot more. <laughs> I love this Winsor and Newton Gold. It's such a gorgeous colour. A really, really rich, rich gold colour. Okay, I think I am more or less there. Just give it a couple more mixes and I'll just make sure it shows well on the in the camera so I'm just going to come round and just show you 
just there lovely isn't it so that's your color now ready to go and now we know exactly the kind of color it'll be once it's dry so now i'm okay to go ahead and start adding flow troll and distilled water or whatever you're using so yeah there we go now let's get to the uh painting okay so let's have a look at the colors i'll be using there's a brown i just mixed and this one's just a regular Taylor's uh, titanium white. I will be doing a duo base, not a split base, but a duo base. You'll see what I mean just shortly. Right then, and then my colours. First of all, there's the earthy ones that go quite nicely with the brown. First of all, the darkest one. Uh, there's just a little bit left that I just want to get it used up. Um, that one's a... <laughs> funky mix of uh, Amsterdam Deep Gold, Winter Newton Gold and Deco Art um, Metallics in Berry and Deep Sapphire. Right, and then the medium shade, if you like, is that one. It's quite reddish. Um, Deco Art Rose Gold and Amsterdam Copper mix in there. And then one that isn't a metallic is this one here. And those are Amsterdam paints mixed together. Titanium buff deep with a little bit of burnt umber just to darken it up a little. Now then, and then I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. I hardly ever, ever use green. I'm just not, you know, one to use it, I guess. Um, this one's more of a bluey green. Um, it's a, li a liquid sex phthalo green and phthalo blue mixed together. And finally, this one here which I've cleverly labelled ages ago as a custom green. <laughs> so I'm afraid I haven't got a clue what's in there. So there's my colour palette today. So let's get down to the spinning pool and start flicking. So I am ready to flick and spin. I am strangely <laughs> nervous because I haven't done a flick and spin in a very very long time but we'll see what happens now first of all let's lay down a large pillow of white yes i will lose some of that but that's fine because i want this to have a real good flow and you know how i said i'm doing a duo base that's all i'm doing i am laying these on top of one another and the reason I'm doing this is as scientific as I wanted to try it <laughs> see what happens okay so there's my base or pillow or whatever you want to call it just torch those bubbles away oh, oh my good grief that went crazy You might need more gases behaving rather funny. Okay. Now, what should I go with first? Uh, I think I want to go light to dark. So let's do that. Some of the uh, sort of beige, beige colour rather. Um, then let's do this one here. Okay, the green-blue mix, there we go, and then, 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 this one here, I think. All right, that's looking good, looking good, and then the unknown <laughs> unknown green mix next and finally the dark one there really isn't an awful lot of this left so might as well use most of it up not all of it there we go right i am ready almost let me just torch one more time Some teeny, teeny bubbles there. But that's cool. 
Right, let's go. So you can, you might be able to see in the picture, I've got my cardboard just there. And yeah, all there's left to do is flick. Oh, good grief. That was a big one, wasn't it? Okay. I like that. It looks like a whale tail or something. Yeah, that went everywhere. I'm so glad I have that cardboard there. <laughs> there we are. Okay. And one more there. Right. This could turn out quite interesting um right i'm not sure about that part there it's a fairly solid solid block of color but i think once i torch it and spin it i think it might open up i can actually see some um cells coming through already so i'm not touching that because i like i like where this is going Okay, now what I'm going to do is add some white all around, just to help, help the paint flow some. Because I don't, I like that composition or the shape it was making, so I don't want it to get distorted too much at least. Okay, a bit more just there. And then get my trusty spatula from somewhere. Can't find that one right. Oh, there it is. Just a sec. Excuse me. Faffing around. There we are. Okay. So just going to take my uh, silicone spatula. I love this thing. It's just from, uh, um, I think I've mentioned this before, you know, like kind of like our equivalent of a dollar store. Dirt cheap from the kitchen uh, department. Uh, yeah, there we go. And I'm gonna deal with the uh, edges a little bit later. Okay, time for spinning. So again, um, because everything is sort of, oh, look at that. Wow, sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> Curving in that direction. What I want to do is spin uh, sort of not a, um, against it, but with it. So let's go in that direction. Look at that opening up. Wow. Wow. Oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, <laughs> I love it. I absolutely bleeding love that. Okay, um, right. I will spin just carefully a bit more because I think I've got quite a lot of paint still there, but I love the way that halo is happening there, you know, between the brown and the white. And this one really has very, very nice definition. Okay. Um, what I need to do now is just grab a stick. Make sure there's not too much paint there in the middle. No, I think we're cool. I think I'm tempted to leave it at that. Yeah. I think so. Okay. So what I'm going to do... Let me just think, oh, look at that, that corkscrew happening there and just falling off the edge and that little tiny one there. Oh, wow, I do love that. Yeah, that's it. I am going to leave it. So I'm just going to sort out my corners. As you can see, I've got plenty of brown paint to <laughs> help me with that. Uh, yeah, I really should start um sort of 
covering my spinning pool with plastic just so that I can collect all this excess paint because there is a lot of it. But never mind, not today. So yeah, I'll just sort out those um, corners and I will bring you in for a close-up. Now the wet results. I am so <laughs> tickled by this. I love it. I love this halo that happened. I mean, look at that. That is so cool. That is so cool. Look at those cells. Wow. The way they're like, you know, peeping under another layer. Same here. I love that. I, I'm sorry. I just can't stop laughing. I think it's so, so cool. Wow. Why haven't I done this for a while? I really do not know. Let's have a look at those there. Yeah. And uh, what I thought was going to be a solid colour was just there. But, you know, you've got that really nice border happening there. And that line of peekaboo cells. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait to see how this one dries. Right. So, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the dried results in time. But, fingers crossed, I will. So it didn't have time to dry, not even close. But I will show you some of the details nonetheless. Um, it has started drying just there on the edge. And you can see, uh, there we go. The brown actually has a really, really nice golden, golden shimmer to it. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> it's still wet just there. But yeah, it's drying from the edges and... Yeah, it's looking good, I think. So, yeah, let's have a look at the details. I mean, this, uh, these groups of cells are just insane. That one right there, I kid you not, is an inch and a half across. It's humongous. And I love the way, like I said, it's sort of like showing behind another colour. I think it's fabulous. But, yeah. I'd love to hear what you think so far, but uh, what I will do is um, I will show you the dried results in, uh, in the next video. But yeah, look at that. Doesn't that look like a butterfly? <laughs> I think it does. I love it. Or what does it make you th think of? But yeah, anyway, please leave me a comment. And if you haven't already, do subscribe and I will speak to you next time. See you then. Bye-bye.